Today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to build one of these pivoting bike racks. These are the clear winner as far as bike storage option goes for me for several reasons. The first being, obviously, it pivots. Now, you want it to pivot because when it's not in use, it can be completely out of the way. And when it is in use, when you get your bike up on here, you can fold these right up against the wall. And depending on the bike, that will save you roughly, I mean, up to two foot, maybe more if you had a road bike. But yeah, just like that, you've got tons more space now. And also, if you're really tight for space and you have a lot of bikes, you can stack these as close as the studs in your wall, which assuming your house is built correctly, that's about 16 inches apart. And that's not the only perk. It's clearly very easy for me to just pull these off and put them right back on. Very easy to load and unload your bike. Um, if you make these out of oak, if you got a heavy e-bike, these will hold it. So, if I've convinced you, let's get into how to build one of these. Now, if you're low on cash, you can build this with hand tools, and I actually did that and preferred that method. But I'm gonna show you both methods with power tools and without. Before we get into the build, I just wanna say a quick thank you to U-Haul for sponsoring this episode. They're giving you guys 15% off their wide variety of bike racks for your vehicle. So once you're done building your bike rack for the house, head on over to U-Haul, select any bike rack you like, and enter code BTB under the gift certificate section and get 15% off. Okay, so essentially there are four parts to this build, so we're gonna go ahead and mark and cut out those boards first. The four main parts of this project are the bottom tire slot, the front tire slot, the top, and the back. For the people actually wanting to make this, I'll include a link to my SketchUp design in the description below for all the measurements on this project. That way, I'm not having to name off all the numbers throughout this video. What I'm doing here is just cutting the lengths for each of the pieces, and the only thing to remember here is the front tire slot will get a 25 degree angle cut on both sides of it and the top board will also get that same angle cut on the front side. Pretty straightforward for both the power tools and the hand tools except for the back brace I ripped down an extra piece I had so I could utilize a half blind dovetail joint with the power tools. For the hand tools we'll actually end up using a leftover piece that we'll have from making the tire slot for the front board. So if you're using hand tools or you don't want to make dovetails you'll have to wait. Okay, so now that we've got all of our four pieces cut out, we're gonna go ahead and mark out where the holes and whatnot are going to go on them. Okay, so our five inch piece and our 27 inch piece are both going to get little three quarter inch holes in them. So we're gonna mark out dead center of the board and then we're gonna mark out two inches out. When drilling holes this big, it's a good idea to drill in from the opposite side you're going to go out of so you don't blow out your wood. Okay, so now that we've got our hole drilled out on the 27 inch piece, we're gonna go ahead and mark out where our tire slot is gonna go. That's two inches in from this side and then an inch in on these other sides. The tire slot is 17 inches long. This will nearly fit all wheel sizes, including 29ers, 27 and a half, 26, road bikes, and even 20 inch BMX bikes fit in this, but it does hit the front fork. Now, I don't care because it's a BMX bike, but if you're only hanging BMX bikes, you might wanna choose a different rack or shorten up my design. Also, to match the shape of the tires, I went ahead and used my compass to mark out a round edge for the inside and outside. Originally, I did not plan on doing this to the outer edge, and that's why I keep saying the board is 27 inches long. But once you shave off this edge, its actual length will be 26 inches. If you're using oak like I am, you're going to need a good blade on a jigsaw, coping saw, or scroll saw to make these cuts. And I do highly recommend a hardwood for this project because you're going to be putting a lot of weight on the front of the rack every time you take your bike on and off of it. For this section, with the power tools, I used a scroll saw to do all of my cuts. And with the hand tools, I used a ripping saw for the straight sections and used my coping saw for the turns. The biggest perk for me with the hand saws was I didn't have to use my brother's scroll saw because not only is it located in his basement, which has very bad ventilation, but also it gives me a bit of a horror movie vibe. Okay, so now that we've got our holes cut out of all of these boards, 
I'm gonna go ahead and put some dovetails on these pieces here. Real quick, if you're not doing dovetails, then the next step here is to cut the leftover piece from the front tire slot to length for your back brace. Now this board is barely long enough, so it will end up having a bit of that rounded off part you cut on it. So to fix this, you can either rip down both sides of it so it's flat, carve the other end so it's symmetrical, or just embrace that one side looking a bit different from the other, which is what I actually ended up doing. Well, along with that, I got out my draw knife and roughed up all the edges to give it a hand carved look, which ended up making that rounded off edge match most of the other parts. Now for those making the dovetails, I made two half blind dovetails on both sides of the back brace and two sockets on the back sides of the bottom and top boards. This was my first time using this dovetail jig and it turned out pretty awesome. And just like that, with a bit of cleaning up, we can start pre-drilling some holes so things can finally be put together. Now, if you did this by hand, you'll need to pre-drill for the back bracing and also countersink those holes so your screws aren't sticking up. Make sure to pre-drill through to the back brace as well, which you can do by pressing your screws through the holes you made or use a pick like I did. Now, both methods are going to require you pre-drill some pocket holes on both the underside of the top board and the underside of the front board. You can get the exact same jig I'm using here for 15 bucks at Home Depot. Once you get all of those holes pre-drilled, then you're ready to test fit everything together. before you put everything together is the edges on the top and bottom boards need to be trimmed off so that it can pivot the full 180 degrees. I forgot to do this all three times I put this together so I had to trim these off once everything was already together as you can see here. But if it all goes together nicely then you can either leave it as is or take it apart and apply some glue to all of those joints that butt together for a super strong bond. If you're putting an e-bike on this thing I do highly recommend that you do this. Once you're done applying your glue or decide not to apply it, you can move on to getting this thing mounted on the wall. For this, I recommend black iron pipe from Lowe's or Home Depot. Or better yet, if you can find it, some Lowe's stock decorative iron pipe with these Allen wrench fittings that make it super easy to cut everything to size. You'll need around 30 inches in total of it and also two bases and two elbows or 90s. The goal here is to get your vertical pipe a little over three inches off the wall, so you'll need to cut the two smaller pieces accordingly for that. As for the vertical piece, I cut mine at 24 and a quarter inches. Once you have all your pieces cut to size, you'll need to find where the rack will be mounted at on the wall. To do this, you'll push your bike up against the wall and stick your bike rack under the front tire as if the floor was actually the wall. From there, measure from the wall to the bottom side of the rack and add two inches to that measurement. Whatever your measurement is, mark it on the wall and mount one of your bases flush with the top side. From there, you can attach all of your piping you cut and figure out where the top base will mount to.
make sure you level from side to side or else your rack might want to start leaning from one side to the other. With everything mounted, you should be able to undo some of the piping and slip your rack onto the vertical piece. Once it's on there, tighten everything back up and provided you put everything together correctly, you should be able to roll your bike up onto the rack with ease. If everything That's appears awesome. to be in the right place and working correctly, then you have one last thing left to do. And it's pretty vital to your rack working correctly. You'll need to mark where the back tire sits on the wall and mount up a scrap piece of wood or whatever you have left over. This will ensure that your bike can actually pivot without it slipping out on the wall. Not only that, but it keeps your wheel from marking up your wall as well. Now, clearly I didn't take much time on this part, but either way, once you have that on there, then your rack is complete. All right, for those of you who just watched all of this and are like, I'm not doing that, that's all too much work, um, I'm gonna leave a link in the description to the metal version of this that I pretty much based this whole project off of. I'll put that link in the description and it goes for like 80 bucks on Amazon. So there's your answer. But for those of you who are up for the challenge, who like the way that the wood looked, I'm gonna leave a link either here or here, wherever it is, and in the description to a page on my website that I put a bunch of pictures and detailed instructions and measurements and all sorts of stuff that really pairs well with this video. Thank you so much for watching, guys. Ah, it's still winter, muddy, sloppy, rainy winter here, so trail building will have to wait. But I do have a very cool video in the works for next time, so I'll see you then. Bye.